What is going on, everybody? It's the front. We're here for our predictions for Fastlane coming this Sunday from Cleveland, Ohio, on the WWE Network. Of course, it is the final stop as we before we get to WrestleMania, as we will be officially on the quote unquote Fastlane to WrestleMania. This show definitely felt like it was thrown together last minute. A lot of it. We do have eight matches. One on the freaking pre-show that I don't understand how this match was even booked for the show for the pre-show. These two men should be on the main card. Honestly, this match should be held off to WrestleMania and put on the WrestleMania main card. As I predicted, wrong, obviously, months ago when they had their first match. their first, Well, their back-to-back matches after a tag team match. I thought that it was going to be R-Truth winning the U.S. Championship would have been R-Truth defending against Andrade at this pay-per-view. Andrade winning the match... Taking the title on the WrestleMania, we would have had Rey Mysterio versus Andrade for the United States Championship. Clearly, that's not the case, and that's not the way they're going. So, instead, we get a match on the pre-show. That match, of course, is going to be Andrade versus Rey Mysterio for no reason other than just to fucking do it. Now, Andrade should, no doubt about this, win this match, plain and simple. Nobody other than Andrade should win this match. Rey Mysterio is at a time of his life and his career where he needs to be putting the young stars over. And Andrade and Rey Mysterio, who put on two, well, relatively two of the best matches in SmackDown or WWE main roster this year. And on the main roster, probably since this brand split started outside of the two gauntlet matches that they've had. I don't want to count those. I mean, one-on-one or tag team matches. Those matches are totally different than what you see here. So Andrade, Rey Mysterio, I'm going with Andrade. Unfortunately, a match I think that should be going on to the pre-show is Mandy Rose versus Oscar. Mandy Rose and Oscar, which unfortunately Oscar, the SmackDown Live Women's Champion, doesn't get as much love as she would if it was if she was. Becky Lynch, Ronda Rousey, or Shelly Flair, and the fact that she's the women's champion. We should all be, like, praising and, like, wanting Oscar to do well. We want her to have a great championship reign like she did down in NXT. We know that's not going to happen. And unfortunately, with Becky, Charlotte, and Ronda Rousey being the focal point of pretty much the entire women's division, Oscar has taken a back seat, and with the fact that Becky and Charlotte, the only two other women viable, in my opinion... For a SmackDown Live Women's Championship opportunity outside of one, who I will sit to in a second, they gave you Mandy Rose. Mandy Rose is not, in my opinion, have any chance whatsoever to become the SmackDown Live Women's Champion. She is in the same position that Ruby Riot was last year going up against Charlotte Flair at Fastlane in the fact that she is just a stopgap before WrestleMania. Unfortunately, last year, unfortunately this year compared to last year, last year, Oscar was coming towards Charlotte, so they had a plan for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. This year, they really don't. Oscar's going to win, and honestly, I'm hoping that this is going to be Oscar versus Manny Rose. Manny Rose gets the spell. Oscar versus Nikki Cross for WrestleMania. Nikki Cross has been brought up to the main roster. Hasn't done anything after the qualification for the Elimination Chamber with her and Alicia Fox, which... We'll get into that um, on sun- Saturday. Everything has to do with Alicia Fox and where she has been. But Nikki Cross versus Oscar would be a hell of a WrestleMania match and would give the SmackDown Women's Championship some life for WrestleMania. So that is when I see that match going and moving on to the next women's match, championship match, the women's tag team championship match. Yes, I know the. Things are all different for all these, but just work with me. We have the boss in her kitchen versus the Samoan Slaughterhouse. This match comes together after the Elimination Chamber in which the Samoan Slaughterhouse were taken out and lost halfway through that match. So we have Bailey and Sasha Banks, your first tag team champions for the women's division. I see no reason for them to lose this match. Bailey and Sasha Banks have a lot of momentum going their way. They are the first tag team champions, they need to go into WrestleMania, they need to go into WrestleMania's champions, go out of WrestleMania's champions, and the next time, and it would be perfect after WrestleMania, 
They've all, it's already been like speculated that the NXT take the NXT takeover post WrestleMania is going to be in June, at the beginning of June, I think June 9th, in Bailey's hometown. This would be the perfect place for the Sky Pirates if Irish Io Shirai or Kyrie Sane is not the women's champion. The Sky Pirates versus the Boston Hub Connection for the for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships. That would be where I would go with this one. So, I'm saying the Boston Hub Connection will retain over, over Nia Jax and Tamina Snuka. Moving on to the next thing. Who would be next? But, of course, we're going to talk about some more tag team action. We're going to talk about the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championships. This match is a rematch for the SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions with the former Tag Team Champions, the, the McMiz, or whatever the fuck you want to call them, going up for the for the tag team championships again and the Usos there's been a lot of room and speculation that these guys will be on the way out of the company from April because just like Dean Ambrose, AJ Styles and others, their contracts are up in April. There has been a lot of teasing that Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy, the Hardy boys, are gonna come after the Usos after they go through McMiz and like Miz and Shane McMahon. I think that is going to be if the Usos are to leave smack, leave the WWE after WrestleMania, then that would be a perfect send off than dropping the tag team titles to Matt and Jeff Hardy, which would be kind of ironic too, because if the Usos take these to WrestleMania and lose to Matt and Jeff Hardy, that would be the third year in a row in the month of April Matt Hardy has won a tag team championship, and that would be interesting. But, so the Usos are going to win this match, no doubt about it. This is going to be one of those matches where I can see, unfortunately, the Miz is going to be the babyface in the feud with Miz and Shane McMahon. Spare me that one, please. Miz is an awful babyface. This guy should never be anywhere near the babyface ranks. I heard Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez talking a couple weeks ago about the fact that the Miz... On total, on, not on total, I was going to say total bellas and total divas, but on his, on his reality show, he is like a total baby face. That's fine and all, but the dude just does not extrude being a baby face. He's just the quintessential best as a prick heel who t- says what he sa- says he's going to do everything that he does and then is like a chicken shit half the time or finds a way to win every time. He's best as a heel. What I think is going to happen is Miz, like, Shane McMahon's gonna get frustrated with the Miz for some whatever reason. He's gonna, like, it's somehow, the the reason they're advertising that, make, like, Miz's dad is going to be there is the fact that they're going to have Miz's dad be attacked by Shane McMahon, and that's gonna prompt for this whole entire heel turn that Vince McMahon has won his son to have since the Greatest Royal Rumble. The whole reason the Greatest Royal Rumble happened the way it did with the Crown Jewel, with the, um, not the Greatest Royal Rumble, Crown Jewel in the World Cup. The only reason that happened that way was because Shane McMahon was supposed to turn heel. They tried to further that along at some, at Survivor Series with the 6-1, six, um, score, which was actually supposed to be 6-0. It was supposed to pull that on, but they were like, nah, we're gonna pull this back because, uh, we're supposed to do a reset and take back the power. That didn't really happen, as we all know. Somehow, Mrs. Dad's gonna get involved, Mrs. Dad's gonna get attacked by Shane, and that's gonna lead to those two feuding at WrestleMania. The Usos will move on, and hopefully it will be the Usos versus the Hardy Boys for the tag team titles at WrestleMania. A match I think everybody would love to see. Two of the best tag teams of all time in space, as Matt Hardy liked to call it. Facing off for the tag team titles, and if the Usos are leaving after WrestleMania, this would be a great send-off for them. Continuing on with the tag team hijinks as we have the triple threat match, the Revival versus Calista Black and Ricochet versus the glorious ones of Chad Gable and Bobby Roode. This match stems for the fact that Chad Gable and Bobby Roode lost the tag team titles to the Revival. And Alistair Black and Ricochet are the team. The, Alistair Black and Ricochet are just stands in for the fact that what happened to Rick, to uh, to um, Tommaso Ciampa and the fact that DIY was supposed to be in the spot. This was supposed to be DIY versus the Revival. 
The tag team match that happened this past Monday was supposed to be DIY versus Alistair Black versus Ann Ricochet versus the Glorious Ones versus Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder. With the winning, with most likely the winner going to Fastlane to face, not this week, what they did last week. It was not this past Monday, but the week before that, but you get what I mean. Alistair Black and Ricochet, of course, got a match on Monday. Chad Gable Bobby Boot came down and destroyed that. And I even said on my Monday Night Review the next day that this was going to happen. I didn't expect them to announce it on SmackDown. I thought we were going to get it probably over Twitter. But it got announced. The only reason that Chad Gable and Bobby Boot should be in this match is to eat the pinfall by the Revival. How I could see this happening is Alistair Black hits Black Mass on one of the Revival meetings. On one of Chad Gable or Bobby Roode. Hits Black Mass on one of those. The Revival come in, hit the Shadow Machine on him. And don't pin him, but they pin the member that got hit with the Black Mass. Because that's the way to do it. They steal the pinfall, one, two, three, and the Revival are your winners and continue on. There's no reason for the Revival to lose the Tag Team Championships. I still do not understand why Ricochet and Alistair Black are a tag team. Yes, they were starting to settle things up with them against the Undisputed Era. They were helping each other try and fight off the Undisputed Era. But why? the only the only reason I feel that a tag team on the main roster is because DIY got taken out due to Vince McMahon's recklessness. And we will go over that on, sun, on Saturday. Just going to let you know. So that is the revival winning by beating the Glorious Ones and Alistair Black and Ricochet not taking the pinfall. We're going to continue this tag team fray because we're going to talk about the Shield versus the whatever the fuck you want to call this new team of Bobby uh, Bobby Lashley, ba- Baron Corbin, Drew McIntyre. Uh, this one, if I was booking this one, this one, th- this entire thing is stemmed from the rumors of the fact that Dean Ambrose is quintessentially on his way out. We will talk about that more on fr- on tomorrow. On unscripted because there are still people in the company. It's 50-50. Half are thinking he's still he's staying. Half people think he's leaving. So this is why this is brought together. Why the entire heel turn for Dean Ambrose was retconned and destroyed and gone. That and because WWE fucked all that up. If I was booking this match, Dean Ambrose would take the pinfall by Drew McIntyre hitting him with a Claymore kick. Is that going to happen? Probably not. This is Roman Reigns' first official match back. The reason, and another reason they're doing the Shield reunion, if, even if Dean Ambrose wasn't leaving. This is Roman Reigns' first match back since his, in, since his time taking out from his leukemia. And the fact that he is still recovering. Roman is not going to be doing much in this match. Roman is not, not projected to be coming back full time until after WrestleMania on the European tour. Roman is going to not do much. He's going to probably come in, do a Superman punch, Superman punch, Superman punch, spear, and that's that. He's not going to do as much. The reason they didn't do a normal tag team match is because he would still have to do some load. And it wouldn't have made much sense. Having the shield, Roman takes, probably expects the match, gets a Superman punch in, grabs who, uh, like Bobby Lashley or Drew McIntyre or Baron Corbin, brings him over to the side... They tag in one of the others, and the other two take most of the heat. Roman, this is pretty much set up to do this is because this could be the last time we see the Shield together ever. And Roman Reigns, his first match back, they want to protect him. Because quite honestly, he should not be wrestling yet. Not even close. The fact that Roman Reigns is still is even wrestling yet is something that is kind of a miracle. The fact that he should not be in the ring whatsoever. So, Roman being back is why they're doing the Shield reunion on top of the fact that Dean Ambrose might be leaving. So, the Shield, if I was booking this, I've already said it, if I was booking this, the Shield would lose. Dean Ambrose would be the one to take the pinfall, and Dean Ambrose would end up costing his team the match, which would lead to a match between Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose at WrestleMania. And why it would be like that is because Dean Ambrose would be like, I just, I, I'd like, be like, they happy. I did what you guys wanted. You wanted the Shield reunion. There was a Shield reunion. Roman would be pissed and be like, listen, I'm going to have to teach you a lesson, and we're going to have a match at WrestleMania. They have their match at WrestleMania. Roman beats him. That opens the show, by the way. If Dean Ambrose versus Roman Reigns is the match at WrestleMania, that opens the show. Plain and simple. I don't want to see Roman versus Drew. I don't want to see Roman versus Baron fucking Corbin or Bobby fucking Lashley. 
I don't want to see any of the trash right there. Dean Ambrose versus Roman Reigns for at WrestleMania because of what happens in this match. Matt, they need to, the Shield should lose this match to set up a match between Roman and Dean Ambrose at WrestleMania. That's all you need to do. But I say the Shield is going to win. I would book the Shield to lose thanks to Dean Ambrose. But the Shield is going to end up winning. WWE is not going to let Roman Reigns lose his first match back. And unfortunately, this might this will probably be the main event, even though it shouldn't be. Even the next match, I think, will not be the main event. Daniel Bryan versus Kevin Owens for the WWE Championship. As we all know, this was supposed to be Kofi Kingston's spot. Before that, it was supposed to be Mustafa Ali's spot. To anybody who thinks that Mustafa Ali was not supposed to face Daniel Bryan. Well, actually, local advertisements in Cleveland had Samoa Joe versus AJ Styles versus Daniel Bryan for the WWE Championship in a triple threat match. I don't see how that would have worked out well. So, what we got here is Vince McMahon being, which I honestly think all these changes Vince McMahon's making on his own accord is to set up a power struggle between Triple H, Vince McMahon, later on down the line. It's a slow burn. It's going to not be this year. It's going to be WrestleMania 36, which, well, by the way, we're going to talk about and roast WWE if we can on the WrestleMania 36 logo, which was announced this past um, yes, yesterday. Now, this is an obvious answer. Daniel Bryan wins this match. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Clean as a whistle, a dirty pinfall, or whatever they have to do. Dana, uh, Daniel Bryan is going into WrestleMania as WWE Champion. If he didn't lose the match, the title to Kofi Kingston in the Elimination Chamber, he's not losing the title before WrestleMania. What did they do before? at WrestleMania? I have no fucking idea. A lot of people expecting it to be a one-on-one -on -one Kofi versus Daniel Bryan for the WWE Championship. Then what happened this past Tuesday tells me otherwise with Mustafa Ali making his return and aiming immediately for Daniel Bryan. There is four weeks left until four weeks left after four weeks from Sunday will be WrestleMania, so they have a lot, a hell of a lot to do to figure out what they're going to do for WrestleMania. But honestly, I don't know the right answer. Kofi Kingston, in my opinion, should not win the WWE Championship in his current iteration of his character. Just no way, no, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens. The most intriguing thing I see in the WrestleMania right now is what's going to happen with the WWE Championship. For the simple fact is, there is no plan, no set plan for the WWE Championship. We'll have to wait and find out. But Kevin Owens. Will not be winning the WWE Championship. That is the most obvious thing out there. And the main event, in my opinion, is Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch for the SmackDown for the right to see if Becky Lynch makes it to WrestleMania. This match is happening simply because of Becky Lynch being taken out of her match against Ronda Rousey after she pretty much assaulted. She, she assaulted both Stephanie and Triple H. And the booking they did the next Monday when they pulled her back and told her that you need to apologize or you're not going to wrestle Becky, um, Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania was some of the most asinine shit that they could ever come up with. What was the point of having Becky apologize if you were going to have her get suspended anyway? It made no sense. And it kind of tainted her a little bit. She went off and was suspended did not even last a fucking week before she came out and attacked Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair at the Elimination Chamber. The night before she attacked Beck and Charlotte Flair at a SmackDown Live house show. Which again, are you serious? Then she didn't appear until the day of Ric Flair's birthday party, which we thought was going to be her putting Ric Flair and disarm her just to incite her getting put back into the match. Come back this past Monday... After a fiery 20 feud, feud between Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey, we come to Monday Night Raw. She gets reinstated. She has to face Charlotte Flair at Fastlane. If she wins, she gets added to the match. If she loses, she's not going to WrestleMania. Charlotte Flair doesn't really... Becky Lynch gets attacked and beat the hell out of by Ronda Rousey. Not just, not just on screen, but off screen, off of TV as well. And she is not going into this match 110%. But this is an obvious win. 
Becky Lynch wins this match. It is a triple threat match at WrestleMania. The only thing that makes me wonder is this should this has to be the main event of Fastlane. There is nothing. I don't care. If it would have been Kofi versus Daniel Bryan at Fastlane, I think that would have been close to a close second. This is the hottest topic going into Fastlane. This needs to be the main event. This needs to be the main event. These two can put on, these two have shown. Just go back to the last woman standing match at Evolution. Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair put on probably the match of the year for 2018 for the main roster. Now, my biggest gripe with this match, whether it's main event, mid card, starts of the match, doesn't fucking matter. This does not, this hurts the triple threat match at WrestleMania. What made Daniel Bryan, when he went to WrestleMania, different about him getting put into the triple threat match is that he didn't have to pin Batista or pin Mandy Orton to get into that triple threat match. He had to face somebody else. If you really wanted, like, there's not really anybody else that she could face unless you wanted Becky Lynch versus Stephanie McMahon. If Becky Lynch beat Stephanie, she got put in the main event of WrestleMania. That would have been something. But having Charlotte Flair come in here and do the job to Becky Lynch before we get to WrestleMania really makes it seem, really shows that Charlotte Flair stands absolutely no fucking chance at winning at WrestleMania. It really makes it a three, a triple threat match, a two horse race. Ronda Rousey or Becky Lynch. And Ronda's not retaining the title. It's time for you all to realize that Rick, like Becky Lynch versus Ronda Rousey should have been the main event. We'll go over the bullshit reason why they, like the, the quote unquote reason they are act, the real reason, the quote unquote real reason, it's a triple threat match. But yeah, Becky Lynch wins, no doubt about it. Those are my predictions. Make sure to hit that subscribe, comment down below, like or dislike this video. I'd like to thank everybody who's watched my Raw, SmackDown, NXT reviews. I will see you guys tomorrow for our, our unscripted episode 60. As we go over a lot of things, a lot of things broke on, like, a lot of things came out on Thursday. I'm going to do a couple things tonight. Today, getting a couple more news stories so I can make sure I have a lot for you guys on Saturday. I'd like to have my podcast be at least an hour and a half to two hours if I can get that high. But we'll see you guys. Hit that subscribe button, comment down below, like or dislike this video. Find me on Twitter at the France. Find me on twitch.tv slash the France 08. And I will see you guys tomorrow for Unscripted Episode 60.